Hello everybody, welcome back to your fourth JavaScript tutorial. So if everything's going well, that's great, but if you're kind of confused, feel free to leave me a comment and tell me how bad of a teacher I am. But if everything's going good, then continue. So methods, also known as functions, well, what, what are they? They take a value, do something with it, and return a new value. So earlier we had the example, got to find somewhere to type, to uppercase, which took the original lowercase value, or whatever case value, and turned them all to uppercase. We always have these parentheses after methods. So let, let me illustrate this in an awesome high quality painting I'm going to make right now, live. This is live, guys. This isn't, this isn't planned. This is live art. All right, so let me illustrate. Here we have this value, okay? And then we have this awesome method. And then we have a variable such as, um, let's name Caleb. Okay, so now we have this variable with the name, name. Pretty cool name, I know. And we also have the name Caleb, which is assigned to the variable. So the variable has a value of Caleb. The variable name is name. Make sense? Hopefully. It's kind of simple. Well, the reason we have var here is because we're defining the variable right now. We haven't used it before, so we need to define it. So to define a variable, we, we say var, and we say the variable name. So this value is right here, Caleb. And this is the method to uppercase. This method is going to take the value, put it through the method, and it's going to submit out a brand new, improved, elite version of the original value. So now we have Caleb in all uppercase letters. So this is what this function does. It takes the value, puts it through this little magical tunnel thing, and submits or returns a new value. Well, this value is just kind of here on its own. It doesn't really do anything because we haven't told it to do anything. It's just kind of floating here by itself. Well, we can assign this to a new variable or do something with it. So for example, we can reassign to name like this. We can say name is now equal to name to uppercase. And what this is going to do, basically this last part right here, this represents the final value over here. It is going to reassign it to the value to the variable name. Or we can assign it to a new variable. So we could say var x is equal to name to uppercase like this. So that's an example of what a method does. Now that we just wasted like three and a half minutes, we can finally look at the PowerPoint. So a lot of this is going to be repeating myself, but that's okay. Methods are functions of object-oriented programming. JavaScript is an object-oriented programming language. Everything, essentially everything we make in JavaScript is an object. So methods come after an object in using what's known as dot notation or object notation, either one. So basically we have the object name and then we have a little period and then we have the methods name with parentheses at the end. So to help remember, think of methods as an action, they do something. So let's define an object. Here we have a variable with the name food and we assigned it the value pizza. Food is an object of type string. As you can see, it's an object because we defined it using the var. So basically, we defined it here, and it has a value that is a string because it's in quotation marks. So because this is an object of type string, it has some predefined methods. 
So in JavaScript, we can actually make our own functions to be used as methods, and as well as ones that are predefined when you create something of type string, for example, it's going to have some methods as, as like to uppercase, which is the one we just used. So I couldn't think of a title here. <laughs> here we have food to uppercase. Because to uppercase is a method, it will take the value of food and do something with it. In this case, it would take the value pizza, which is what we assigned. If we look here, we assigned the variable food, the value pizza, and it will return pizza in all capital letters. So what do we do with the return value? There's a multitude of things we can do with the return value. For example, this value can be assigned to the original variable or assigned to a new one. So here we, we defined the variable food, gave it the value pizza. Now we're overriding the original value and, and replacing it with food to uppercase. So basically it's going to take this value, uppercase it, and reassign it to the variable food. This right here is known as a comment in JavaScript. JavaScript will ignore this and it, the code will still work. Or we can take this value and assign it to a new variable such as food in all capital letters which is different than food in all lowercase letters. We can assign it food to uppercase. So both of these are essentially two, two things we can do with the return value. Some methods have what's known as an argument. Sometimes we can provide an extra value or more to the method. These are known as arguments. They go within these uh, t -t -t parentheses. I can't b believe I forgot what those are called for a second. <laughs> for example, the method concat takes the original string and adds something to it. So we have the name Caleb we can use the method concat and we can add on the video maker to the string the video maker to so it's going to take these two strings and it's going to combine them into one like this and we can just like that boom something like that you, you get what I'm saying I'm gonna go back probably just confused you there but this does not change the original value of name though as we saw in our picture, it just returns the value and we have to do something with it. So let's see this in action. Let's start programming some JavaScript. Aw oh, yeah. So here we have, you can just ignore my extra code, I have some junk in here. But basically, we have a HTML document, we have the head, the body, and then we have a form, but you don't have to worry about that. And then we have a no script in case the person doesn't have JavaScript. And then we also have a script tag at the very end of the body before the body is closed. Sometimes we will put JavaScript in the head of the uh, JavaScript page. But for this case, it doesn't really matter. And it's dependent on what you want to do with the JavaScript. So right now, we're just going to put it at the bottom before the body closing tag. So this is what our page looks like over here. And if we look at our JavaScript... Uh, all right. Sorry, I forgot to save my clear JavaScript. All right, so what we can do is we can have a variable. So here we have a variable with the name name and it has the value Caleb. Now we can reassign this And then we save it. Oh, and obviously we're, it doesn't, it's not going to do anything with the value yet because we just have variables. To see what they are, we can use what's known as an alert and we can alert the variable name. So now it's Caleb in all capital letters. If we put the alert here, refresh make sure you save it each time it's going to be just Caleb with the capital C and then basically here's where we're at in the code it gives us a little pause now it's going to reassign the variable name to Caleb in all uppercase letters and then boom we got Caleb in all uppercase letters so that's how that works now let's take a look at the concat method 
So we can have... Yeah, let's leave those alerts there. So within concat, I could say... So the first alert is going to give us Caleb with capital C. The second alert should give us Caleb the Video Maker 2. Uh, read the save. Whoopsies. All right, I messed something up, so let's see. All right, obviously the problem here is I'm using a single quotation mark and closing it with a double quotation mark. This is not going to work in JavaScript because you have to use both of the same kinds. So I fix that and then refresh. First, first one's correct. Second one is correct. Okay, so now let's continue on with our PowerPoint. Each value passed to a method is known as an argument. In some methods, we can use more than one argument. So concat is one of those that can take multiple arguments. As you can see here, we have four. And we can use more than that if we wished. But now the value of full name, right here, is going to be Caleb the Video Maker 2. We get the same result, just with more arguments. That's just probably a bad example, but that's just an example of how we can use multiple arguments. Arguments can also be variables. So for example, we have first name, which is equal to Caleb. Last name, which is assigned Curry. Not, they're not necessarily equal, they're assigned. So full name is first name, where we add on a space and the last name. The reason we have a space is because if we didn't, we would just get Caleb Curry without a space. So adding that extra space in is going to give us this. And to do that, we just have single quotes to enclose a string that has just a space in it. And then to separate this first argument, we have a comma and then a space just because spaces after commas, that's just normal. And then we have the second argument which is last name or curry so there's a multitude of methods that we haven't covered yet there are also methods that that will do things with numbers such as to fixed which will take a number so here we have a variable money which is equal to 34.633443 to fixed and then we put a 2 which is our first argument it's going to cut us down to two decimal places. So now we get 3463, which is the appropriate way to present money in America, probably everywhere, but I don't know. We have not talked much about the number data type. This is only an example. And it, what I mean by that is basically, if you look here, this is not enclosed within quotation marks, because if it had quote, quotation marks, then it's a string, not a number, which there's actually a difference here. But that's pretty much all I have to say for this video. Hopefully that was helpful. And if you liked it, be sure to subscribe. Because that's what's awesome. And if you subscribe, you'll be like super awesome. So yeah, share with all your friends. All your programming nerd friends, if you have any. Ho hopefully you do. See you in the next video.